What concerns me gravely is Sean Foich. And I mentioned him, and we're going to talk about him. Many people like this guy because of his music, and he had his traveling, quote-unquote, revivals all throughout the United States, and he went into other countries too. Um, specifically during the 2020 thing and stuff like that, he was the one that was fighting against the lockdowns, doing revivals in the streets and everything like that. But people look at that, but they don't actually know where this guy comes from and what he believes. Sean who claims he personally knows those 88 or 98 people who got saved at uh, Satan Con. He's bad news. First off, he comes from Bethel and is heavily involved in their music. He comes from the church, the cult of Bethel. And you can see one of his, his posts there. He's talking about, uh, for real though, God showed up and in, in crazy ways and we ended in a party. And then hashtags Bethel Music, Bethel Music UK. So right off the bat, coming from Bethel, he already has the teaching of a false gospel and a false Jesus. That's not a good start. That's not a good start. Bethel, Bethel is entirely satanic, and there is not one thing Christ-like or godly in that cult. They are full of Satanistic teachings. It's completely Satanic. He also runs with people like Hillsong's Brian Houston. That's, that's a post from him trying to play it cool while really geeking out on the inside because I met Brian Houston in the White House. The boss, the eagle, the legend, Brian Houston. Well, we know all about Brian Houston. Not, not much godly there. He also runs with people like Todd White. There's another heretic. Somebody who claims to have the power of the apostles and can make legs grow and make people walk and blind people see and can do all these miracles and stuff like that. He's preaching a false gospel too. And Sean likes to partner up with him. Remember, wolves run together. This is something I talk about all the time. Wolves run together. If a worship leader like Sean doesn't have the spiritual maturity to see the heretical teachings of Brian Houston and Todd White, he is unqualified for the position of worship leader. He has absolutely no business leading worship or writing worship songs for people to sing. He is unqualified for that position if he cannot see the heretical teachings of those two men right there. Not only that, but the background of Bethel on that. So Sean Foich also, and I kid you not, practices grave soaking. Straight from his Twitter, father-son impartation at Charles Finney's grave. Mantles. Hashtag mantles. Where have we seen this before? Oh, that's right. Benny Johnson. The late Benny Johnson, uh, who is the late wife of the pastor, head pastor, Bill Johnson of Bethel Church. That's right. They practice and promote this. She is also grabbing some mantle from Charles Finney's grave. Hmm. That's probably where he got it. Yeah. Practicing necromancy. Well, maybe he didn't get it from her. Maybe he got it from this guy. Yep. That's right. He's friends with Jonathan Rumi. And we know Jonathan Rumi, before he took on the role of Lonnie Frisbee for Jesus Revolution, he grave-soaked on Lonnie Frisbee's grave. Maybe he gets it from him. Wolves run together. And Sean Foich comes from Bethel, runs with wolves as a false idea of the gospel, and he practices necromancy. This is the man who apparently is leading all these revivals all across the United States. I wonder how many people are actually getting saved or they're getting fed a false Jesus or a false gospel from this guy, if he even cares. Or is he just up there rocking his guitar letting God be radical and, and throwing a party afterwards. 
You know, that's, that's the question. Does he actually care about that? I don't know. I'm not accusing him of that. I'm just, I'm just saying, does he? That's a question I have. Houston, white, roomy, Bethel, grave soaking. There's more. He also delves into the occultic and the mystic symbolism and practices. There's an ad and the movie poster for his super spreader movie. Um, and right up front, this is the movie where it was about the revivals during 2020 and all that stuff. Well, his ad and his movie poster and stuff like that has an occultic symbol right on the front. Can you guys find it? Can you guys find it? It's right there. Hard to miss. It's one eye. All of his posters for this movie feature one eye. And by the way, this is everywhere in the CCM uh, contemporary Christian music industry. There's Toby Mac, there's Skillet. One eye, just right there, not even hiding it. Right there in plain sight. It's not just uh it's not just that though. And right here I know I'm going to get some heat for this one, but I don't care. You guys need to know. Casting Crowns as above so below symbol right on the cover of their Thrive album. Right there for all to see. They blatantly put the occultic as above, so below symbol on their cover. This is covered in so many occultic beliefs from the emerald tablet to the baphomet to the hexagram, alchemy, Kabbalah, Buddhism, and even Helena Blavatsky has also used this same occultic symbol and teaching. And it's all right there. And guys, if, if the... Toby Mac cover with the eye wasn't enough. He actually has a song called Illumai, which is the chorus goes Illumai, 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 Illuminati coming through. It's written about the Illuminati. But people don't even don't don't even recognize it. Don't even recognize it. This is the occultic symbolism that is being displayed everywhere. One eye, as above, so below, everywhere. Sean Foich has got it going on. All these different bands have it going on with their type of stuff. This is just where we're at now. Right there in plain sight. Because it's not a ministry, it's an industry. A lot of people don't even recognize it. I didn't for the longest time. And I've been a conspiracy guy, tinfoil hat guy, for a long time. And I didn't even notice it. And then when I finally got out of the, the out of my own way, gave up the music thing, got out of the NAR church, and I started looking into this stuff, I just saw how absolutely rampant this stuff is. Now, there's also a mystic practice called angel numbers. Angel numbers. They are mystic numerology where the belief is that our angels or our spiritual guides will communicate to us by using triple numbers repeatedly or patterns where it's like 8282 or something like that. But most of the time it's in triple digit numbers where you start to see those numbers everywhere. Psychics and mystics claim these numbers are directly from our own personal angels or spirit guides. And that is straight occultic. And this is from a website, as you can see right there, the woman who's explaining it as a psychic medium. I believe that we all have guardian angels who help us make the most of our earthly journey by sending us signs. One common one being repeated numbers. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, Sean Foich has got a thing with the triple two number. He's got a thing with the triple two number. He's been practicing it since high school. You can see from this post, I'm not sure if you can read it because it's maybe a little bit blurry, uh, but it's there. He's talking about his number is 222 and he's talked about he's, uh, that's been his number since high school and he's had it and he's been seeing it nonstop throughout his entire life. He's got it on his hotel door. 
He's got another picture right here. Again, 222. He's talking about the number is following me. It's trying to tell him something. His angel is communicating with him. He's throwing this out there. So much so. He's even got his album that came with a 222 key. He made a souvenir for others to hold on to. You get your very own occult trinket and or totem. He practices occultism and pro promotes it as biblical. That's not all though. But this is where it really connects to the NAR, New Apostolic Reformation Church, which we know Bethel is, is in this post. Year of the Kingdom come back hang on to that kingdom come back hang on to that and then he says i posted this right after the chiefs won the super bowl earlier this year on 2 2 2020 he's talking about that's his number and this is andy reed his uh the head coach of the chiefs his 222nd career win so he's promoting it because it's his number and he said i declare this would be the year of the kingdom come back and that maybe was the first of many signs why am i bringing up this uh kingdom comeback so much kingdom comeback if you guys don't know the nar practices teaches and pursues kingdom now theory uh, or dominion theory they believe that our job is to instill the seven mountain mandate, the seven things that are required in order for Jesus Christ to bring his kingdom down. They believe that we are to get the earth prepared for Christ to bring the kingdom down. This is completely and entirely unbiblical. This is a false teaching that removes so much of scripture. But he promotes it. And not only, not only was he using his angel numbers to promote it, but he was also putting it out there. The kingdom come back. And as we know, this comes straight from Bethel. Now, on earth as it is in heaven. We understand this comes from Scripture. But what the NAR does, and again, I refer you to Spurgeon. Discernment is not knowing the difference between right and wrong. It is knowing the difference between right and almost right well what they do is they take something from scripture which is right and they just slightly twist it to almost right to promote their kingdom now theory whenever you see an nar church that is blatantly i mean they are throwing it in your face of on earth as it is in heaven they are pushing their kingdom now theory that is what they're doing bethel Hillsong, Elevation, they all push this kingdom now. Theory. And the belief reaches wide. Those are the big names. People know about them, but a lot of people might not know about this guy. Josh Adkins. Josh Adkins is a man who claims the title of pastor, but is heavily involved with mysticism and magic. He also holds to the kingdom now theory and his church, Loft Church, right there, is heavily into summoning, into visions, fortune tellings, and possessions. I've actually had an interaction with this guy. No joke. I've actually had an interaction with this guy on uh, Facebook because he was notorious for posting, I mean, all the time, posting videos of these revivals of his buddies going out to them, and they would do the place your hand upon the head to bring down the spirit and put them on there. And you see these people get slain in the spirit where they start falling over. They start rolling around on the ground. They start laughing. They're talking about how their body feels really warm and stuff. If you want to go back to channeling, when you're channeling a spirit or a demon, your body starts to get really warm. They talk about that. They start going with babble tongue and start all this stuff. And they promote that because they think that that is the Holy Spirit. They think that is God. They have the apostolic power to do that. No. And all that gets wrapped up with the kingdom now 
stuff. If you get into Hillsong and Bethel and stuff like that, they all believe that they can do this type of stuff. Well, we know in Scripture in the last days, well, there's going to be a lot of mysticism. There's going to be a lot of witchcraft that's going to be start coming around, a lot of black magic, a lot of white magic, a lot of this stuff going on. And this is a part of it. But if we look at this, I just want to show you this. From This is a promotion from not too long ago, March 3rd, on the Loft Church website. Now, they say a day of vision casting. Well, if you know anything about this church, vision casting is not like the business vision casting where you're trying to create a, a vision, an idea, a step plan for what you want to do. No, what they're talking about is literally summoning and bringing in visions to get direct revelation from God so they know where to take things. That's what they're talking about with this. Then if you go down further, um, we also have two house, uh, two house church veterans to share. Prophecy and stirring up the supernatural will be done at the end as the Spirit directs. That is not how the Holy Spirit works. That is not how that works. You're going to be stirring something supernatural up, but it ain't going to be God. It ain't going to be the Holy Spirit. And so this type of witchcraft is all wrapped up in the NAR. It's all wrapped up in the kingdom now. It is all wrapped up in what Sean Foich believes and promotes and push, pushes out there. That's why I don't believe when he says 98 people got saved at SatanCon, when I see the evangelists he's talking about, and then I see the evangelism that he provides, I don't believe it. And it makes me sad. I'm not happy about that. Don't, don't ever peg me as happy that people didn't get saved. I'm not happy about that. That saddens me, and it irritates me. I get angered by it. Because that's what happens when you start throwing out a false gospel. Is this type of stuff. That's why I warn about this stuff so much. That's why I'm so heavy against this type of stuff. Back to Foich. We've talked about this Adkins dude long enough. But back to Foich. Again, remember, he comes from Bethel and he believes in kingdom now. Maybe you guys didn't quite get it. Well, he just blatantly puts it on this post. Till the whole earth looks like heaven. That's kingdom now. That's kingdom now. Anybody, any Christian worth their, their salt who has an idea of the Bible and how things are going to happen understands this earth is not going to look like heaven until a lot of things happen beforehand. And he's trying to skip all that. Kingdom now is trying to skip all of that. This is the reason why this is, this is one of the reasons, because I know a lot of people know his revival stuff, but he also is heavily involved with politics. And this is one of the reasons why he's so heavily involved with politics is because he's trying to bring about the seven mountain mandate, the kingdom. Now he understands he has to get involved with this type of stuff to pursue that type of thing. Then there's also a reason for teaming up with another Bethel guy, Chris, Bolotin, I plan on talking about this dude more. I'm not going to talk about him now. There's just too much. Chris Bolotin, if you don't know, he comes from Bethel. He's one of the main, uh, he's the, like an associate pastor of Bethel Church. He's one of the teachers of Bethel's School of Supernatural Ministry, which is Hogwarts pretty much. And he claims to be an apostle and a prophet who can prophesy and teach others to do so as well. Show me in scripture where it teaches you how to do that. You can't find it. You can't find it. Self-proclaimed apostle and prophet. Well, on this little ad thing, Rally for America, you can see right there at the bottom. I don't know if you can read it. I'll read it for you guys. The kingdom is coming for America. Again, kingdom now. Again, kingdom now. This man is unqualified for his position of worship leader. This man is unqualified to even say that he ha has shared the proper gospel with anybody because he does not know it. And if his area is that skewed, I'll just say it. 
I don't believe that he ha- knows the true Jesus. I don't. I'm not God. I can't judge his heart. But by the fruits that he bears, I don't see it. And it saddens me. It does. I'm not happy about that. It saddens me. Because he's probably going to be somebody that's left behind. Whether he knows what he's doing or not. That's where we're at. Again, this is... This is what's going on in the church. This is why I'm so adamant about pointing this stuff out. This is why I'm so adamant. And sometimes it comes very subtly. Very subtly. So subtle that if you're not specifically looking for it, you may not find it. Let's take a look at one of Hillsong's songs. Uh, They're called uh, What a Beautiful Name. Verse 2. You didn't want heaven without us. Hmm, that's not right. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. Again. Now you might look at that second line, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. And again, you might be thinking, okay, uh, no, that's that's not entirely wrong. But when you know that Hillsong practices kingdom now theory, again, that changes everything, right and almost right. Remember, we know what they believe. We know what they teach. So that changes everything about that second line. But you didn't want heaven without us. You know, I believe, I believe there's another guy by the name of Stephen Furtick that also teaches about God needing us. As well. All the way from Genesis chapter one. Remember, let us make man in our image. God needed someone to show the world what he looked like or else he would have just been a concept. God would have been an abstract theory. So he made man and woman to reflect who he was. He needed someone to show his nature through. So he made me and you. You hear that? If you're not paying attention to it, you'll miss it. God needed us. God needed us. No, Mr. Furtick. God doesn't need anyone or anything. God does not need us. God does not need us. But yet you're actively preaching it. You're you're putting us on his level. You're putting us on that level. And as we know, Stephen Furtick preaches little God's doctrine. I'll bring Furtick back into this conversation a little bit later. But God does not need us. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't need anyone. He doesn't need that. And when you start having that idea, then your whole view of God, your whole view of Jesus Christ, your whole view of the Holy Spirit begins to change. Because now you're starting to reduce his power. You're starting to reduce his glory. You're starting to reduce his holiness. You're starting to reduce him. And you're starting to push us up. But as we know, that's something that the NAR church does. They like to push us up. They like to make us the focal point of everything. Talk about that as well. But God is almighty and we are nothing. We are not even a whisper in the wind in comparison to God. He does not need us. This is an extremely false gospel, and it's a twisting of beliefs that are invading everywhere in these churches, and it's getting passed over without notice. 